What is this? By B. The Trash. Read by My Lost and Found. Summary. When a weird archway with a mysterious veil inside appeared in the underworld, Nico was suspicious. When a man fell through, Nico knew he had to save him. But should he trust the veil? He didn't know what it was. A portal? How did the man get through alive, even if it was barely? This fic is about 4,000 words and one chapter. As always, link to the fic is in the description, and on with the story. Nico had no idea what the archway was. It just appeared one day, in the fields of Asphodel, to the west of Hades' palace. It appeared on the crest of a cliff, overlooking a vast, empty field. In the distance, you could barely see the fields of Asphodel, and you could hear the scream from punishment. It was one of Nico's favorite places. He had approached it cautiously at first, not knowing what it could be, and wondering if the underworld was under attack. After he determined it wasn't a threat, Nico thought about asking his father if he knew anything about the mysterious archway. But something stopped him. Surely Hades knew. And surely he would tell his only living son if the archway was of importance, right? Or at least, that was his excuse. In reality, Nico enjoyed the mystery. The archway was clearly magical. Inside of it was a semi-transparent white shimmer, almost like a mist. Nico could feel a completely new power coming from it, and it intrigued him. He spent hours the first time he saw it, walking around to look at it from all sides, but finding nothing. Eventually, he gave up the search for answers and moved on to his duties. He returned to it multiple times, he would spend hours trying to figure out what exactly it was and pondering the meaning of its arrival. Was it a warning? A sign? Who put it there? And most importantly, why? One day, Nico was back at the cliff, sitting next to the archway, his feet dangling off the cliff. He couldn't remember how long it had been since the archway appeared. It felt like months, but knowing him could have been only days. Today, he was tired. Too tired to pay much attention to the veil inside the archway as it began whispering. In fact, he didn't notice anything was off until the archway gave off a bright, white light, a harsh contrast to the dark, yellow lighting of the fields of Asphodel. When he did notice, he scrambled into a standing position. Before he could summon his sword, the veil went dark vanishing completely for a split second before it flashed white once more and returned to its normal state. As it flashed white, a man appeared from within the arch. He fell backwards, as though he'd been shoved, and only Nico's demigod instincts allowed Nico to catch him before he hit the ground. The first thing Nico noticed after he gently lowered the man to the ground was that he was alive, unconscious, but alive. Nico quickly took in the newcomer's appearance as he scanned the man's soul for information. He had long, shaggy, black hair and a pale complexion only rivaled by Nico's. His face was gaunt and haggard, and his body was tense in a state of unconsciousness. His hand was tightly gripped around a long, thin stick. As Nico scanned him for information, he came up surprisingly short. The only thing his powers could tell him was a name, Sirius Black. Nico frowned and decided to examine the stick in Sirius's hand. He carefully pried the other man's fingers off and held it gently in both hands. Visibly, there was nothing interesting about the twig, but Nico could feel magic radiate from it. He frowned as he tried to place where he had felt similar magic before. Before he could get far, he was pulled out of his thoughts by a sudden change in the living status of the man. He was dying. Nico immediately remembered that simply being in the underworld would slowly kill any demigod. So how much quicker would it go if this man was mortal? He knew he had to do something. But what? 
Nico cast an uneasy glance at the archway. Was it a portal? Some kind of magical travel Nico never encountered? Did it link two places, or was it entirely random? Nico glanced at the man, serious, and debated what he should do. He didn't particularly want to risk his life, based on a guess, but he knew that the mortal couldn't stay here much longer, or he would be stuck forever. Nico felt obligated to return him to wherever he had come from. He could sense that it was not meant to be Sirius's time to die, and he knew the fates had yet to cut his string. With one final, untrusting glance at the veil, Nico slipped the man's stick, which he now assumed to be some sort of wand based off the magic coming from it, into his pocket and picked him gently, bridal style. Nico was surprised he could hold him without falling over, but he didn't question it. Whether it had been he was getting stronger, or the man was lighter than he looked, Nico couldn't care less. He was more focused on the strong possibility of death that he was facing. His last thought as he stepped through the veil was, If I die from this, father will be pissed. Harry saw Sirius duck under Bellatrix's jet of red light. He was laughing at her. Come on, you can do better than that, he yelled his voice echoing around the cavernous room. The second jet of light hit him squarely on the chest. The laughter had not quite died from his face, but his eyes widened in shock. Harry released Neville, though he was unaware of doing so. He was jumping down the steps again, pulling out his wand as Dumbledore turned to the dais too. It seemed to take serious an age to fall. His body curved in a graceful arc, as he sank backwards through the ragged veil hanging from the arch. And Harry saw the look of mingled fear and surprise on his godfather's wasted, once handsome face as he fell through the ancient doorway and disappeared behind the veil, which fluttered for a moment as though in a high wind and then fell back into place. Harry heard Bellatrix Lestrange's triumphant scream, but he knew it meant nothing. Sirius had only just fallen through the archway. He would reappear on the other side any second. But Sirius did not reappear. Sirius! Harry yelled. Sirius! He had reached the floor, his breath coming in searing gasps. Sirius must just be behind the curtain. He... Harry would pull him back out again. But as he reached the ground and sprinted towards the dais... Lupin grabbed Harry around the chest, holding him back. There's nothing you can do, Harry. Get him! Save him! He's only just gone through! It's too late, Harry. We can still reach him! Harry struggled hard and viciously, but Lupin would not let go. There's nothing you can do, Harry. Nothing. He's gone. With a cackle, Bellatrix disapparated away. Harry pushed Lupin off, tears coming to the corners of his eyes. He... he can't be gone. I was going to live with him. I... Lupin set a hand gently on his shoulder, and when Harry looked up at him, he could see the tears in his eyes, too. I know, Harry, and I'm so, so sorry. Harry wiped the tears away from his eyes as he stared unseeing, at the floor, but more fell immediately. He tried to suck in a deep breath, but it caught in his throat. Sirius was dead. Harry couldn't believe it. His godfather was infallible. He was strong. Bellatrix couldn't have killed him. Right? He hardly heard the people moving around him, talking. Eventually, he was shaken out of his stupor, by a hand on his shoulder. He turned around and saw Hermione looking at him, with pity in her eyes. Harry. Harry wiped his eyes again. Is everyone all right? Where did the Death Eaters go? Hermione nodded. Everyone is fine. A little banged up, but we're all okay. Everyone disapparated after you destroyed the prophecy. Bellatrix didn't realize you had broken it. Harry's breath caught in his throat. 
that's serious is he's dead. The words were hard to swallow. Speaking it out loud only made it feel so much more real. Hermione sighed. I know. Lupin told me he fell through the veil of death. Harry, I'm so sorry. Harry shook his head. It's not your fault. It's mine. I led us here. I didn't close my mind. Hermione shook her head. You can't blame yourself, Harry. Harry shook his head, not responding. He knew, deep down, that it was his fault. None of them would have been there if Harry hadn't fallen for Voldemort's trap. He turned back towards the veil to watch it for a minute. Ginny came up beside him and laid a hand on Harry's shoulder. Harry, I think we should go. Harry shook his head and turned to Hermione to ask. Does anyone know what's on the other side of the veil? He might not be dead. He might just be... stuck. Harry knew it was a long shot, so when Hermione shook her head, he only sighed. I'm sorry, Harry. That veil was made to study the link between life and death. We... The Ministry believes it is a portal between life and death, and that touching it kills you immediately. Harry nodded slowly and turned back to the veil. He took a deep breath and accepted Sirius's death. I know. Goodbye, Sirius. His eyes watered again, and he let them fall. He cried for his godfather, his ticket away from the Dursleys, one of the only living links to his parents, and for his friend. He glared at the veil, hating it for everything it stood for, as Hermione and Ginny watched him, silent. He was about to turn away, when he could have sworn he saw the veil ripple. He glanced at Hermione, who had a confused look on her face, and then he glanced around the room to see if anyone else had noticed. Everyone was looking at the veil, with the same confused look on their face. Harry turned around and cautiously stepped towards the archway. Serious? He called in a timid voice. The veil rippled again and twisted. It shifted in color as a leg slowly emerged. The leg was soon followed by another, then an arm, which seemed to be clutching something. Everyone stared in shock as out of the veil emerged a boy, a few years younger than Harry, with black hair and deep black eyes. He wore an aviator jacket and loose-fitting jeans, both of which appeared to have seen better days. Gasps of shock went around as Harry zeroed in on the thing clutched in the boy's arms. Serious. Everyone drew their wands and pointed them at the boy, but Harry was too distracted to think about that. He couldn't breathe. Was Sirius alive? Was the boy just bringing back his body? Why did he look so confused? The boy's eyes swept the room, sizing up each person before he zeroed in on the person closest to him, Harry. After a moment of them just staring at each other, the boy lifted Harry's godfather up slightly, as though gesturing to him, and asked, So, is he yours, or is this the wrong place? Nico wasn't sure what he expected as his vision cleared from the mist of the veil, but people wearing robes pointing sticks at him was certainly not it. As he looked around, he realized why he had felt as though he had seen the type of magic contained in Sirius's stick before. These people around him were wizards. Hades had told him about them, if only so Nico could lighten his workload and deal with their souls as they passed over. Apparently, they liked to remain as ghosts, which annoyed Hades to no end, so he pawned the job off to Nico. He knew very little about wizards but he did remember Hades telling him that their magic was too weak to affect a powerful demigod, much less one of the children of the Big Three. With the knowledge that he was at least semi-safe, Nico felt comfortable enough to speak first. He looked at the one who was closest to him and did his best to gesture. So, 
Is he yours? Nico asked. Or is this the wrong place? It was a very real possibility that Nico had come through into the archway and ended up in a different place than the man he was holding had left. However, as the one he had been looking at spoke up, he was relieved to find out that he was wrong. The boy who had spoken had large glasses, black hair, and green eyes. His expression was... happy, but guarded. That's my godfather. Is... is he alive? Nico nodded. Barely. I don't think he would have lasted much longer. A bushy-haired girl stepped forward and asked, What do you mean? Nico paused for a second, glancing around the room. He thought about what he could tell them that wouldn't reveal too much, but he couldn't think of anything. Instead, he avoided the question by shrugging and saying, He was dying, so I brought him back through. He seems fine now. The girl looked at him skeptically and opened her mouth to ask another question, but Nico cut her off by asking, So, where exactly am I? He knew he must be somewhere in the wizarding world, but he also knew that wizards lived all over the world. He didn't know much about their customs or ruling hierarchy, so he figured he'd find out a little more about the situation he recklessly threw himself into. Everyone's eyes seemed to widen, and a wizard so old Nico was surprised he wasn't close to death, stepped forward. His voice was polite, but had a suspicious undertone. My dear boy, are you saying you don't know where you are? Are you aware of what you've just... achieved? Nico could tell that achieved wasn't the word the man wanted to say, and his defenses immediately raised. He struggled not to react too much, and he hissed. I'm fairly certain I just saved this man's life. However, I can always take him back if you want me to. And no, I don't know where I am, so I would greatly appreciate it if you might enlighten me. Nico tried not to glare at the man as his grip on Sirius tightened. He realized suddenly just how heavy the man had become in his arms. And before the old man could respond, he added, And would you like Sirius or not? Everyone stiffened in shock, and it took Nico a moment to realize why. Oh, they hadn't told me his name. Nico waited for anyone to answer him. After a moment, a man stepped forward, and Nico tensed, sensing a werewolf. Nico's eyes scanned him as he scolded himself for not catching it sooner. He backed up a few steps, cursing himself for putting him in such a vulnerable situation. He either had to drop Sirius to summon his sword, or somehow get one of the others to get rid of the werewolf. In his mind, there was no option for abandoning the man in his hands, after he had just saved him, so he was stuck simply backing away. Seeing that Nico was cautious of him, the werewolf raised his hand slightly. I'm not going to hurt you. He sounded slightly amused, like there was no way he could pose a threat. My wand is in my pocket. I was just going to take Sirius from you and see if he needed any medical attention. Nico hesitated. He glanced around to gauge the other's reaction, and saw that none of them seemed worried about the fact it was a werewolf who'd stepped forward. After another moment's hesitation, Nico snapped, Back up! The werewolf took a few steps back, obviously shocked by Nico's tone. Nico glared at him suspiciously and took a step forward to gently lay Sirius on the floor. He backed up and nodded, allowing the werewolf to pick up Sirius and carry him back to the group of people. He watched the werewolf cautiously, but returned most of his attention to the old man. So, where am I? It seems to have been a while to answer the question. The old man smiled, though it was clearly forced. My boy, you're in the Department of Mysteries inside the Ministry of Magic, and I must say, you are certainly a mystery. Nico furrowed his brow. He was sure he had heard Ministry of Magic before, but he couldn't pin down which country it was in. After a few seconds, he realized the people all had British accents, and he wanted to facepalm. So, 
I'm in Britain. Technically, you're in Scotland. The old man smiled at him. Where were you before? Nico's defenses raised again. Nowhere. The old man sighed. Well, would you at least enlighten us with your name? Nico glared at him, but found no harm in telling him. My name is Nico. Now, who are you? The old man smiled. My name is Albus Dumbledore. Nico glanced at the other people, his gaze returning to the man, Albus, quickly. Albus obviously noticed his glance and turned to the two kids closest to Nico. Would you mind introducing yourselves to Mr. Nico here? The one with black hair turned to him. He seemed to have an inner struggle for a moment before saying, I'm Harry Potter. The bushy-haired girl immediately cut in. I'm Hermione Granger. Where were you before? Do you live on the other side of the veil? It's widely believed that the archway you came through is the link between life and death. Did you come from some sort of afterlife? That veil usually kills everyone it touches. How did you survive? How did you save Sirius? Nico's head was spinning from all the questions, and he could only really remember one of the questions. He slowly reached for his ring, twisting it slowly to remind himself that his sword was within reach. He blurted out the first thing that came to his mind. Um, I mean, it's not the veil that kills them. Her eyes went wide, and they began to shine in excitement. So you know what's on the other side, then? What is it? Nico took a slight step back, slightly confused and intimidated by her curiosity. Um, I, well, I'm not really, I can't. Nico didn't know how to avoid answering her question. It wasn't like he could just tell mortals about the underworld, even if they were magical mortals. Luckily, the old man, whose name Nico had already forgotten, stepped forward and cut her off. I believe you're overwhelming our guest, Miss Granger. I do, however, have a question for you, if you don't mind. He looked at Nico as he said the last part. Nico nodded hesitantly, so the man continued. What do you know of the wizarding world? Nico was confused. He narrowed his eyes at the old man, wondering what his motive might be. Unable to think of anything, but still suspicious. Nico responded, Um, well, it exists. You all really like robes. Your wands give off really weird magic. Albus, at least Nico thought that was his name, studied him for a moment. So you're not a wizard? Hermione turned to Albus and said, But Professor, there's no way he could have survived what's on the other side of the veil if he wasn't a wizard. Nico scoffed. Well, I'm not a wizard, and I can survive on the other side of that weird portal better than anyone. Hermione turned back to him. But how? Without magic? Nico cut her off. Whoever said I didn't have magic? I only said I wasn't a wizard. Nico knew he was playing in dangerous territory, but her reactions were too much fun. Hermione stared at him in shock. Are you some sort of magical creature, then? And are you using some form of transfiguration? Polyjuice? Nico laughed, not knowing what any of those things meant. I don't think so. Harry, who had been watching them quietly for a while, chimed in. Then what are you? Nico shrugged, changing topics quickly as he glanced towards the werewolf, who was still crouched over Sirius. Another boy, about Harry's age, had joined them. How's Sirius doing? The werewolf stood up and walked over to join the conversation, and Nico reached for his sword again. He may not have done anything yet, but there was still a chance he would smell that Nico was a demigod, an attack. Everyone noticed his sudden change in demeanor, but no one commented. The werewolf addressed Albus, or Dumbledore. Nico wasn't sure what his name was. Instead of Nico. Sirius is alive. I patched him up the best I could, but I'm not really sure what's wrong with him. I don't know if there's anything we can do. Nico focused on Sirius's soul, searching for what was wrong. It felt as though his soul was being tugged towards the underworld, even though he had left. 
It wanted him back. Nico stepped forward slightly. I can help with that. Everyone looked surprised. Why didn't you say anything sooner? Harry asked, agitated. Nico glared at him. I was a little busy being interrogated. Harry looked ashamed, and Nico turned to Dumbledore, assuming he was in charge. Would you allow me to try? Dumbledore inclined his head slightly. You have saved him already. We would be even more in your debt. Nico rolled his eyes, like these mortals could ever give him anything. He cautiously pushed past the werewolf, keeping in in his peripheral. When he reached Sirius, he crouched down and closed his eyes, focusing on his soul and its connection to the underworld. It was quite easy to find, as the connection was unnatural. Focusing on that, Nico slowly tried to separate the underworld from his soul. The piece was stubborn, and Nico had to grit his teeth in effort, still unable to separate it. Nico opened his eyes and stood up. He turned to the others and gave them a small smile. Don't freak out, he warned them. He gave his ring a sharp twist, and a sword appeared in his hands. Everyone had a different reaction. The werewolf stumbled back, scrambling to get away from the blade. Nico smiled darkly and turned back to Sirius. Stabbing his sword in the stone floor next to Sirius, Nico tried to summon the piece of the underworld to his sword. Slowly, as it struggled and screamed, a scream that only Nico could hear, Nico managed to wrangle the piece into his sword. After he got it in the sword, he yanked it from the ground and attempted to banish it back to where it belonged. It hovered in the air for a minute, and Nico was afraid it would latch back on to Sirius's soul, but it suddenly vanished. With a satisfied smile, Nico turned back to everyone else, all of whom were looking confused. Nico wanted to laugh. They probably didn't see anything except me struggling with the air. The thought amused him. He might not wake up for a while. This was really hard on his soul, and I don't know if he'll be entirely okay immediately. He might be sick, too. His body and his soul aren't quite in sync anymore. Everyone except Dumbledore stared at him in shock. How do you know that? Hermione cried. And what did you do? And how? Nico sighed, ignoring her. Well, I really must be going. He began to walk back towards the arch. Dumbledore smiled at him. Ah, yes. If you would simply follow me, we can guide you back to wherever you came from. I understand if you believe you don't need our help. However, we are quite far underground, so it may be difficult for you to get out on your own. Nico smirked. I know that we're underground, and thanks, but no thanks. Nico pointed to the veil he had come through. I think I'll just go through that to get back. Hermione stepped forward. But the veil kills anyone it touches! Nico stared at her in disbelief. I just came through it. Very much alive, thank you. And so did Sirius. Are you seriously that stupid to think it will kill me? Besides, I already told you it wasn't the veil that kills people. It's the place it leads to. Hermione frowned. What? Like some sort of hell? Hell doesn't exist. Nico shrugged. Everyone has their own beliefs. Well then, how come you can survive this hell if it's so deadly? Hermione challenged. Nico frowned, trying to think of a lie. I guess it's because my father owns it. Harry stared at him incredulously. Your dad owns hell? Nico smiled. You could say that. He stepped closer to the veil, less than an arm's length away from touching it. It's been a pleasure. Well, not really. It's been interesting, though. I've got to go. Nico smirked at what his next sentence would sound like to them. I've got a lot of work to do, and my father would kill me if I didn't finish it all. Nico watched their faces as they tried to piece what little he had given them together as he stepped backwards into the veil. His vision blurred again, and he turned around to walk back 
into the underworld. And that's all for this fic. Oh, I love this. This is great. It's short. It's sweet. It's nice. I'm just a sucker for Harry Potter and Percy Jackson crossovers where Nico's just like doing some stuff and she's like appears and it's like what's going on i don't really care it's great but oh my gosh i cannot do dumbledore's voice i'm sure i switched to like five different accents or whatever because like i'm not the best at old man voice but i'm especially not good at old man british voice <laughs> like ooh. but anyway i hope it was decent but yeah this story is just great i love like the veil just like leading to the underworld and Nico being like, ah, a person. Let me just bring that back. And everyone's just like, what the fuck? And Hermione is like, what the fuck? It's like, it's great. She's she's having an aneurysm in this, and I love it. <laughs> oh yeah. You also may have noticed, uh, I have cover art for this one that I drew, because this fic is recorded and the cover art was done for Voice Team 2024 for the brain art challenge. It's basically misread one of the previous challenges from the last two rounds by changing like a single word or a phrase. So what, I, what I've done here is for the cover art, I mix up crossover and instead of create a audio fan work that is crossover, I did create a visual fan work that is crossover. So I did fan art for this fic, which I'm using as the, the cover thumbnail. And for the actual recording of the fic, I'm not sure if it's going to count for me doing like two things for technically the same fic, but you know, I'm not going to do, like I wanted to record this, that's why I did fan art, so I'm not just going to not going to do it, but I'm hoping that it can count for weighted blanket, as in find an author who has no blanket permission statement and no pod fix of their work posted on AO3 at the time of the beginning of the challenge and pod fic one of their work, so is this, is this maybe? I don't know. <laughs> But no, this is a great fic. I just, I love, I'm a sucker for the crossovers. And this was just so well written, short and sweet. Love it. You know, as always, link to the fic is in the description below. Go leave a kudos, go leave a comment to the original author. I know they appreciate it. Like, I hope you guys enjoyed. That's all for this time. I will see you guys later.